Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how to create a better scrolling credits title sequence inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So in this video, rather than using the standard scroll title in the effects library, what we're going to do is go over to the effects tab here and create a fusion composition, which gives us a blank template in order to create our own custom effects. So I'm going to drop this into the timeline. If you're going to want the title to have a background clip, then just make sure that you position it over a clip that's on video track one, and then you put the title on video track two. Otherwise, if you just want a standard black background for your credits, then just move it after the final clip for credits or before the start of your video for a intro credits scene. So we're going to make an ending credits here, and I will have the fusion clip at the very end after the video clip. And with that selected, I'm going to go over to the Fusion page. So on the Fusion page, we can use the Node Graph Editor to create exactly the effects that we want. Because we're doing just a simple scrolling credits, we don't really need to have 3D text or 3D shapes or anything like that. Those are all the options you see over here. Instead, we're just going to use standard text plus elements. So if I go ahead and hit text plus over here on the left three times, it's going to create a merged together combination of three separate text nodes. Now, the reason that we want three text plus nodes instead of one is that we are allowed to change the font on each one individually. So if you want, let's say, one font that may be a little bit bigger for the header of your credits, if it's the main group that worked on the production or a special thanks section, you can put those in a header text. And then with the other text elements, you can have their own font type and font size, which will be smaller text, and it allows you to differentiate the two, and it usually makes it look a lot better. So the only other node that we're going to need is a transform node. So we're going to have that feed after this merge two. And when I'm talking about merge two, I just mean the final merge node. So merge one is combining these two text elements, but those are feeding from merge one into merge two. So this is our final merge where everything gets combined. After that, we need to add a transform node. So if I right click, go to add tool down to transform and then transform, we can get that node here. And that allows us to adjust the position of all of this stuff at once and the, the adjustment that we're going to make obviously is to have it scroll from the bottom of the screen to the top so i'm going to feed the output from merge 2 into this transform and the transform to media out and that basically sets up our node graph so now we need to add text into these three text nodes and adjust some of the settings to make it look right and then add the movement so let's start with text one we'll have that be the header text if you want to rename the nodes you can hit f2 and give it a more relevant name so maybe i'll call it header text here so it's a little bit more clear so for the first line of text i could put the movie title for instance so i might call this movie of movies now the default font is open sans but i would recommend you go and find some nice new fonts online so one cool one i found earlier today was called kenyan coffee so I think this works pretty nice for a header font. And we can increase the size of this node until it's basically as big as we want it to be. So I'm just going to size it appropriately there. And you know what? I think we'll actually add in one more text. So we'll have one for the movie header to be the biggest font. And then we'll have a slightly smaller one in terms of the size. So if I click on the merge to here and add another text, then that'll just create another merge node. So now we're working with four texts. So this header text, I'm actually going to rename movie title. The text two will be the header text, basically the main line of each section. And this text three is going to be job titles. And then text four will be names. Okay, so now we can add in our first header text. So let's make this say something like production team. And you can see that basically because these text elements are both centered on the screen that they're overlapping each other right now. So what I'm going to do is take this header text. I'm going to go over to the layout tab, which is the second one here. And I'm going to move the center Y. And I'll just move that down to basically offset the position from the movie title here. Uh, maybe we're going to want it to be much further down. So I'll put it somewhere like there. And then we'll change the font type. So for fun, let's just make it something else like Gabriola. And what I'll do with the transform, because we're not really keyframing it for animation yet, just to make it easier so we can see right now is I will adjust the center Y position and move everything up here for a bit. So let's go to job titles and start adding stuff in as well. So job titles, maybe we want a director. 
So let's just add in some character names here, maybe Celine. Then we have a Ricky and a Gomez. And now we need to take all of those names and put it below production team. So just like before, I'm gonna go to the layout tab and offset that center position. So let's move this down here. Now that it's on the screen clearly, we can see the text is too big and the font is not that great. So let's shrink the size here and change it to a different font. So I'll try this Kiona font out here. So the idea here is that we're gonna actually want these job titles over on the left and we want them all to align on the right side and then over on the right over here where we have the actual uh, actor and director names we're going to want those to left align so that they're all lined up on the left side so that's where these anchors come in so we're going to want horizontal anchor right yep okay and we set that to be right aligned which means that there's now like this invisible line here and everything is pushed to the left of it but on the right side, everything aligns up perfectly, which will make it look a lot nicer than if you have it centered. So now we just need to adjust the horizontal or X offset of the layout. So we can go to the layout tab and do that by changing the center X, but you may also notice there are these gizmos you can play around with. So we could just move this over to the left if we want to set the position, which might be an easier way of doing things, making it a little more visual and not needing to worry about the exact number so much. So now we need to add in the names associated with these jobs. So what I'm gonna do is double click on this Y value and I'm gonna hit Control C and copy that over to the names section. We'll make the font the same, the size the same and have it line up perfectly with this left side, which will make it look a lot better and more professional. So let's go over to names and layout, and then I'm gonna hit Control V to paste that value of negative 0.183 in. Then we'll go to the text and add in the names. So maybe the director name here is Chris Tutorials, and the person playing Celine is Re Rebecca. And then Ricky is actually played by Jeff. Uh, generally, I mean, generally for actors, you would want the full name. So let's add some random NAS names in too. So Rebecca Smith, Jeff Stone, and then maybe Antonio. And last name, we could just make it Garcia. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, once again, things aren't lining up that nicely. So the easiest way to do that is gonna be to make the font and the size match between the job titles and the names. So let's go check what we have for job titles and copy that over to names. So the size here, I'm gonna double click it, hit Control C to copy the size, and then we'll go over here and paste that in for the size of the names. And then we can also change the font. So Kiona, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same font, but for now we can have that line things up better. And then I'm using the gizmos here in order to adjust the offset position. You can see that it's still centered around that anchor point though. So let's go ahead and make it left aligned. And now everything is nicely aligned on this left side. I think in this case though, having exactly the same font on both sides, uh, it's not very clear. So let's actually find another one that we can use for the right side. Okay, so just picking a random one out, David CLM doesn't look too bad. Let's adjust the offset position a little bit. It's not necessarily critical that the font sizes are going to be exactly the same, but if they are similar, it's going to be a little bit easier for you. If a font by itself is somehow smaller or bigger than another font, you can also adjust the size to get them to kind of correlate a little bit better. Okay, so now we have our movie title, the header for the production team, the job titles over here on the left and then on the right we have our actor and production team name and then on the right over here we have our names now when i actually think about it having the actor names on the production team doesn't exactly make much sense so maybe we would want to have a separate section for that and so this production team would be more like the director and the cameraman and then we can have a separate section for actors so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to hit enter a few times to push the production team so let's go ahead and do that. With the header text over here, I'm going to go and push the production team down a bit by hitting enter, making a lot of blank spaces. And then I will put cast up here at the top. Now at this point, it might be getting a little confusing since it's vertically centered. So if there's lines that are kind of towards the top here, like cast, it gets pushed up here. And then the production team is pushed to the bottom. I think it would be more clear if we actually make it uh, aligned at the top. So that means wherever this production point is, is where the text is going to start. So that might make it clearer. So let's just position it with the gizmos. Okay, 
So we have production team down here below. Okay, so now let's take the job titles and names. We'll also make those vertically aligned at the top. So I'll do that for both sections there. And we'll take these actor names and we'll push those above the director. So let's copy and paste that up here. Push the director a few lines below. And then we will take the names over here, select these three, cut them away, add a few lines for Chris tutorials, and then we will paste those names back in. Now you can move the cast titles up here and the name titles up here. Just make sure that they align together. So once again, when you have one set correctly, you can go over to the layout tab and copy the value for the Y over to the other one. So let's paste that in there. And now they line up more or less. So now we need to add in the production team titles back in. You can see right now that they're off screen. So what we can actually do once again is to go to the transform and push everything up using this Y transform value. So this will allow us to see basically the ending of the credits. Let's get everything aligned again. So in names, we can go to the text tab. You can see Chris tutorials and director not lining up. So hit enter for another space there and maybe two actually, so that there's some margin between the production team and what's below it. And then we'll do the same on job titles, adding an enter there. And let's add in a couple other production team titles. So what we might want is the cameraman, hit enter, and we could have a set designer. And then we can have lighting crew down here at the bottom. Maybe instead of cameraman, we make cameramen and we add a space. And then we'll also add a space for the lighting crew. Under the presumption that we have two cameramen working on the project. So let's go to names now and add that in. So who is the cameraman on this project? <laughs> so I just took a second to randomly generate five names and make my life easier. So I'm just going to hit control V and paste those all in. So you can see because we set things up nicely, everything more or less lines up smoothly. So we can zoom in a little bit and maybe we need to offset it just a tad, but more or less everything's lining up. So that is good. It looks like there's a character unsupported by this font here. So I'll just make that a standard A. Eh? And aside from that, everything's looking pretty good. Okay, so if we look here, the production team doesn't quite have as much space as the cast up there. So let's try to add an extra space for the bottom job titles. So let's make that space there and a space here. And that doesn't look too bad. If you run into an issue where you can't really get these to sync up perfectly nicely, one thing you could do is create an extra header text and just merge it together. That way you can get this production team header to line up perfectly independently of the position of the cast up there. So if you don't need it, then don't worry about it. But if you do, just use another text if you want to be able to edit the different things individually. Let's say that everything looks good here. It's uh, pretty decent. So what we'll do is go to frame zero here and set the starting position for the Y transform, which is going to be off the screen here. So I will make it something like negative 0.18. And then we're going to click on this little gray diamond over here, which sets a keyframe and allows us to do animation. So basically now what we need to do is to figure out the duration of how long we want it to take for the whole credits to roll. So in this clip, we have five seconds by default. If you need it to be longer than five seconds, then what you should do before you continue is go over to the edit tab and then you take this fusion composition clip and you make it as long as you need it to be. So you click on the side and maybe you expand it to nine or 10 seconds. So let's just make it about 10 seconds there. So I'll just go over to this final frame. We'll make it a 10 second animation because we're working in 30 frames per second. So 300 frames divided by 30 frames is 10 seconds. And you can confirm your frame rate if you don't know it by going up to file and then project settings and you'll see the timeline frame rate, which is what this is gonna be working with. So at this point, frame 300 in the timeline, we can set a new value. The easiest way to do that is gonna to be to use these gizmos. So with the transform selected, we have the gizmos to adjust it. So we can just move everything with this gizmos. You'll see a green line get drawn between the keyframe values. So basically it's gonna show you how far it's gonna animate up. And we want this to be all the way off the screen because credits, they usually don't end with text still on the screen. So we may have to put this like way up there and we can see how that's gonna affect things down here. So a little bit further than that. If you need to, you can hit control middle mouse wheel to zoom out so that you can see everything, see where the text ends up. And we can just put it there. So basically we have two keyframes, one at the start here and one at the end. And you can see that the transform actually animates between those. And this transform controls every text element that has been merged together 
And the main benefit here is that even though we're working with different text nodes, they all animate at the same speed together, which is what we're gonna want for a good looking title. And because we did this the custom way, we are able to create different text fields, line them up individually with different anchor points, have custom fonts and custom font sizes for each of them. And that just allows you to make a much better looking title in the end. So now we can go over to the edit tab and we can see how this is going to look. So I'm gonna hit play on it. Uh, there may be a little bit of playback uh, lag because of course it needs to render out. Not too bad. I mean, you can see the red bar at the top there. That's the areas that haven't been rendered yet. So if we give it a second, it'll pretty much pre-render everything. So let's go back to the start now that most of it has pre-rendered and play it back. We can see our credit screen scrolling up to the top. Maybe we have a little bit of alignment things to do, but overall we've created a pretty nice looking credit screen. You may think it goes a little fast if that is too fast for you. What you can do is you can just expand the duration of this credits clip. So we can make it 15 seconds, go over to the fusion page, and you'll see the white keyframe notch there. If you want to move it, the best way to do it is in the spline. So the only property we've animated on this transform node is the displacement. So if you check displacement and you hit control and use middle mouse wheel to scroll out, you should see the ending and starting keyframes for that animation. So we just need to move this over to the end of the video, which is going to be right here. So if we go to the last frame on this preview timeline, that's where we're going to want to move this keyframe and snap it over here. So if we just get it right about there, we can zoom in, make sure that it is at the correct one. Getting it perfectly positioned on the timeline cursor, I guess uh, there's not really snapping in this window as far as I can see. But now that's gonna slow down our animation a lot. So you can see the text moves a lot slower now. The last thing we're probably gonna wanna adjust is just the centering of that header title. So let's click on movie title. And maybe what we need to do is center the X. Let's zoom in a little bit here. So I'm not 100% sure why it looks a little off center. Uh, maybe it's everything else that's actually off center. Uh, no, that's centered correctly. So anyway, if you want to manually make an adjustment here, all you need to do is click on the gizmos, center it, make sure it lines up with the rest of your clip, more or less. Maybe we bring it down a little bit. And as long as you get it centered right at one frame, because the animation is all controlled by the transform, then as long as it's aligned properly here, it should stay aligned for the entire animation. So let's go to the edit page and see how this looks. Okay, and it does look better now. If you need to, just make those minor adjustments and get everything aligned exactly where you want it on the screen. But basically at this point, you should get the idea of how this works, how you can create your own ending credits screen the better way inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So that's gonna be it for this video. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.